Welcome back everyone, this is CodePulse here with the final episode on how to create your own programming language. So in this episode we will be adding the run statement to our language which will run code from another file. We'll also add in something that I completely forgot about which is comments. After that we'll then create an example working program and then that will be it for this series. So we'll come into basic.py and we'll scroll down to the built in function class. So we'll come down to the end of this class and we want to add in a new run function. So we'll define an execute run method so all the code in here will execute when someone uses the run function in the programming language. We'll add a single argument to this run function and that will just be the file name of the file that we are running. So we'll start by extracting this file name into a variable so we'll get that from the symbol table. So we'll use the get method and we'll put in the file name argument. We'll now add in a check to make sure that this file name variable is a string so if not we just raise this error. So what we'll do then is we'll reassign file name to file name dot value. So our file name is currently our custom string type and then we can get the value which is a python string and so we're just reassigning that. So when we're working with it, it will now be a python string. So we'll now create a try block and we want to read the contents of this file. So we'll open the file at that file name in read mode and we'll assign that to the variable f and we'll create a variable called script which will be the contents of that file. So we'll just catch any exceptions. And we'll raise a runtime error if there's any exception. So we'll just convert that exception to a string and include it in the error message. So we'll now call the run function which we have defined at the end of this file. And this just takes in the file name and the script. This function returns two variables, a value and an error. We're not going to need the value so we'll just put in underscore and then we'll extract the error. So we'll again raise a runtime error if there is an error and we will include that error in this error message. And then that is it, so we just need to return a runtime result success. And we're not returning anything, so we'll just return number.null. While we're at it, we're going to add in another function to our language which I completely forgot about in previous episodes, and that is the length function. This function will simply just return the length of a list. So we'll have a single argument, and that will be the list. We'll get this list from the symbol table. We'll just make sure it is a list, and if not, we'll return that error. And finally then we can return a runtime success and we're creating a number type and for the value we're just getting the length of the list. So we'll just go ahead and create a couple of constants for those new functions. Okay. So now all we have to do is add those functions to the global symbol table. And that's it. So now we'll add comments to the language and that's very easy to do. We just have to come over into the lexer. And if you remember before, we just completely ignored spaces and tabs by simply advancing past them. Uh, well, we basically want to do the same thing for comments. So a comment in our language will be the hash character followed by the comment text. And the comment will end once we have a new line. So we'll add a check if the current character is equal to a hash. If so, we're going to run a method which we're going to create called skip comment. So we'll come down to the end of the lecture and we'll add in this skip comment method. So all we have to do is first of all advance past the hash symbol. And our comment ends once we reach a new line, so we'll check while the current character is not equal to a new line. And then we just simply advance past that character and ignore it. And then we can finally advance past a new line as well. And that's now all the changes I will be adding to this language. And of course you can add plenty of more features. One thing you might want to try to do is add in an object type or like a dictionary type. And you'll also probably want to add a lot more built-in functions because we don't really have much at the moment. So we'll just create a file for our script, so we'll call this example, and for the extension we'll just use Miapple, make your own programming language. So we'll just try out printing greetings universe. And if we run our shell, we can type in run and then run the file example.miapple. And as you can see we get greetings universe, and we can add much more as well. So we'll just try creating a for loop, and we'll print loop, and spoop. So as you can see if we run that, that also works. Of course we can add comments, so this is a very useful piece of software. And if we run that, it will have no effect. So we'll now try to create some functions, so we'll create a function called oopify. It will take in a prefix and it will just add oop to the end of the prefix. So we can now change this to oopify and then put l and oopify sp, so that will make a loop and spoop. And if we run that, it should still work. So let's add a proper function now, so let's say we want to print loop and spoop on the same line, separated by a comma. We'll create a function called join, which will create a string out of a list and separate each element with whatever um, separator you choose. So function join, so we want the elements and the separator. We'll create a result, which is our string. We need to iterate over the elements, so we'll get the length of the elements. And we'll create a loop from 0 to the length. 
So what we'll do is we'll concatenate that element to the string, so we'll get elements index i. And remember, for some reason, I decided to use the divide by operator to get an element by index. We'll also add the separator to the result, and we should now be able to print join. We'll put in the first upify and the second upify, and we'll separate each upify by a comma and space. So if we run this, this should now work. But of course it doesn't because I didn't return the result in this function. And now it works. And we probably don't want the trailing comma at the end of this, so we'll actually check if we're at the last index and we won't add in that separator. So if i is not the last element in the list, then we will add the separator. And that then works. We also have higher order functions in our language, which means you can pass functions into other functions. So we'll create a map function, which is in a lot of languages, and this will take in a list and a function. And what map will do is call that function on each element in the list. So as you can see, we are upifying the string L, and then we are upifying the string SP. And if we had a huge list, that would be very messy. So instead, we can just create a list of strings with the strings L and the string SP, and then call map and pass in the upify function, and we'll apply that to every element in the list. So we'll have to create a new elements list because I just realized that there's actually no way of updating an element at a certain index at the moment in this language. So you'll probably want to add in a built-in function for that. So we'll loop through all elements in that list. And now we can call that function on elements index i. And we can just append that result to the new elements list. So now if we just return new elements, then we are finished with the map function. So now let's print and we'll create a list with the string l and the string sp. We'll pass this into our map function, and now we can map this with the upify function, and then we can once again join that with commas. So now if we run this, we get the same result. So that is probably enough to show in our language, so before we end this video, I'm just going to talk about a few future plans. So the two most voted options for my next series is a simplified remake of this series, and also a tutorial series on how to make your own data language, which would be similar to JSON. So the first couple of episodes for both of those series will be the same. So I'll create those couple of videos first, and then whichever option gets the most votes, I will then make that series first, and then make the other series afterwards. For the remake of this series, I do want to add proper testing to the language. There are about 5 million bugs, maybe even 5.5 million bugs in my language at the moment, and that's mostly caused by not adding in testing. I also, of course, plan on simplifying the code a lot, uh, separating it into different files, and following better coding practices as well, because I think this series was a bit of a mess. I don't know if I already mentioned, but I also want to focus more on the core concepts of how to make your own programming language, rather than focusing on Python-specific uh, code snippets. So now we'll talk a bit about what my plans are for future series. So I do want to write an interpreter in a low-level language at some stage. I'll probably choose either C or Rust. I kind of wouldn't want to use C++ because I just don't feel you have as much control. And it might be a good opportunity for me to learn Rust, or I might just continue with C, we'll see. I also want to create a series on how to make a compiler in Python using LLVM. So normally your compiler has to compile directly to machine code, so your compiler has to support every different uh, CPU architecture out there, every different operating system. But the idea of LLVM is that you compile to this one universal bytecode, and then LLVM will do the rest of the compilations to all other architectures. And LLVM does a lot of optimizations as well, so it's, it's really handy to use these days. I also definitely want to make a series on how to create an operating system from scratch. So create your own operating system kernel. I'm really interested in making my own operating system. And it seems like a good next step after making your own programming languages. Because your programming language can then compile to that operating system. And then you could also write your own custom shell programming language for that operating system. So yeah, it's something I definitely want to do at some stage. Now the possibly bad news is that I'm not going to have nearly as much time to work on these videos after this summer. So I do want to try to get as many videos out before the end of the summer as I can. And while I'm at it I might as well talk about my Patreon page. So my Patreon page is a great way to support me and give me more time to spend on making these videos. You can check it out, there will be a link in the description below. There are a few small little perks such as access to my Patreon only Discord server and sneak previews of my upcoming videos, and maybe even a small bit of Patreon exclusive content in the future. And of course while I'm at it, thanks to Daniel Munch for supporting me via Patreon, and now I'm going to go on a quick rant about YouTube and BitChute. So as many of you are aware, YouTube these days tends to focus more on advertisers rather than content creators. They're having a lot of issues with YouTube demonetizing channels unfairly, they also frequently block content they just don't like, and it you know, really makes it difficult on content creators, especially new channels. 
and of course YouTube can do what they want but I just want to be a bit prepared so I'm also uploading all my videos on BitChute. There are quite a few users switching to BitChute these days and well if their business model is better than YouTube then I don't see any reason to switch. And I'll still be focusing on uploading my videos on YouTube but I just want to have that channel there just so I'm prepared in the future if, you know, if anything big changes. So that's now going to mark the end of this video and of this series. So thank you very much everyone for following along with this series. I definitely learned quite a lot and hopefully you all did too and I hope to improve in my future videos and series. So I will see you all in whatever video I do next.